believing himself in the power of an infinite being who can at any moment dash him to the lowest hell or raise him to the highest heaven he necessarily abandons the idea of accomplishing anything by his own efforts so long as this belief was general the world was filled with ignorance superstition and misery the energies of man were wasted in a vain effort to obtain the aid of this power supposed to be superior to nature for countless ages even men were sacrificed upon the altar of this impossible god to please him mothers have shed the blood of their own babies martyrs have chanted triumphant songs in the midst of flames priests have gorged themselves with blood nuns have forsworn the ecstasies of love old men have tremblingly implored women have sobbed and entreated every pain has been endured and every horror has been perpetrated through the dim long years that have fled humanity has suffered more than can be conceived most of the misery has been endured by the weak the loving and the innocent women have been treated like poisonous beasts and little children trampled upon as though they had been vermin numberless altars have been reddened even with the blood of babies beautiful girls have been given to slimy serpents whole races of men doomed to centuries of slavery everywhere there has been outrage beyond the power of genius to express during all these years the suffering have supplicated the withered lips of famine have prayed the pale victims have implored and heaven has been deaf and blind of what use have the gods been to man it is no answer to say that some god created the world established certain laws and then turned his attention to other matters leaving his children weak ignorant and unaided to fight the battle of life alone it is no solution to declare that in some other world this god will render a few or even all of his subjects happy what right have we to expect that a perfectly wise good and powerful being will ever do better than he has done and is doing the world is filled with imperfections if it was made by an infinite being what reason have we for saying that he will render it nearer perfect than it is now if the infinite father allows a majority of his children to live in ignorance and wretchedness now what evidence is there that he will ever improve their condition will god have more power will he become more merciful will his love for his poor creatures increase can the conduct of infinite wisdom power and love ever change is the infinite capable of any improvement whatever we are informed by the clergy that this world is a kind of school that the evils by which we are surrounded are for the purpose of developing our souls and that only by suffering can men become pure strong virtuous and grand supposing this to be true what is to become of those who die in infancy the little children according to this philosophy can never be developed they were so unfortunate as to escape the ennobling influences of pain and misery and as a consequence are doomed to an eternity of mental inferiority if the clergy are right on this question none are so unfortunate as the happy and we should envy only the suffering and distressed if evil is necessary to the development of man in this life how is it possible for the soul to improve in the perfect joy of paradise since paley found his watch the argument of design has been relied upon as unanswerable the church teaches that this world and all that it contains were created substantially as we now see them that the grasses the flowers the trees and all animals including man were special creations and that they sustain no necessary relation to each other the most orthodox will admit that some earth has been washed into the sea 
that the sea has encroached a little upon the land and that some mountains may be a trifle lower than in the morning of creation the theory of gradual development was unknown to our fathers the idea of evolution did not occur to them our fathers looked upon the then arrangement of things as the primal arrangement the earth appeared to them fresh from the hands of a deity they knew nothing of the slow evolutions of countless years but supposed that the almost infinite variety of vegetable and animal forms had existed from the first suppose that upon some island we should find a man a million years of age and suppose that we should find him in the possession of a most beautiful carriage constructed upon the most perfect model and suppose further that he should tell us that it was the result of several hundred thousand years of labor and of thought that for fifty thousand years he used as flat a log as he could find before it occurred to him that by splitting the log he could have the same surface with only half the weight that it took him many thousand years to invent wheels for this log that the wheels he first used were solid and that fifty thousand years of thought suggested the use of spokes and tire that for many centuries he used the wheels without linchpins that it took a hundred thousand years more to think of using four wheels instead of two that for ages he walked behind the carriage when going downhill in order to hold it back, and that only by a lucky chance he invented the tongue. Would we conclude that this man from the very first had been an infinitely ingenious and perfect mechanic? Suppose we found him living in an elegant mansion, and he should inform us that he lived in that house for five hundred thousand years before he thought of putting on a roof and that he had but recently invented windows and doors would we say that from the beginning he had been an infinite accomplished and scientific architect does not an improvement in the things created show the corresponding improvement in the creator would an infinitely wise good and powerful god intending to produce man commence with the lowest possible forms of life with the simplest organism that can be imagined and during immeasurable periods of time slowly and almost imperceptibly improve upon the rude beginning until man was evolved would countless ages thus be wasted in the production of awkward forms, afterward abandoned? Can the intelligence of man discover the least wisdom in covering the earth with crawling, creeping horrors that live only upon the agonies and pangs of others? Can we see the propriety of so constructing the earth that only an insignificant portion of its surface is capable of producing an intelligent man? who can appreciate the mercy of so making the world that all animals devour animals so that every mouth is a slaughterhouse and every stomach a tomb is it possible to discover infinite intelligence and love in universal and eternal carnage what will we think of a father who should give a farm to his children and before giving them possession should plant upon it thousands of deadly shrubs and vines should stock it with ferocious beasts and poisonous reptiles should take pains to put a few swamps in the neighborhood to breed malaria should so arrange matters that the ground would occasionally open and swallow a few of his darlings and besides all this should establish a few volcanoes in the immediate vicinity that might at any moment overwhelm his children with rivers of fire suppose that this father neglected to tell his children which of the plants were deadly that the reptiles were poisonous failed to say anything about the earthquakes and kept the volcano business a profound secret would we pronounce him angel or fiend and yet this is exactly what the orthodox god has done according to the theologians god prepared this globe expressly for the habitation of his loved children 
And yet he filled the forests with ferocious beasts, placed serpents in every path, stuffed the world with earthquakes, and adorned its surface with mountains of flame. Notwithstanding all this, we are told that the world is perfect, that it was created by a perfect being, and is therefore necessarily perfect. The next moment, these same persons will tell us that the world was cursed, covered with brambles, thistles, and thorns, and that man was doomed to disease and death, simply because our poor dear mother ate an apple, contrary to the command of an arbitrary god.